Okay, guys, this is factoring part three. This is the second special pattern. So we're going to look at the binomial pattern. When you have a square of a binomial, then you're going to want to say to yourself, in order to do the multiplication, square the first term. First term times the last term times 2, and then square the last term. So each of those three phrases is going to give you a term. So down here with these two, these are basically like the formulas or your guidelines. This could have been what was in your Algebra 1 book. Maybe it was X's and Y's. But here's the square of a binomial. Binomial's two terms, and it's a square. And so we square the first term, so a squared is a squared. And then do a times b times 2 would be 2ab, so that's first times last times 2. And then square the last term, which is b squared. With a minus b squared, there's only one difference. You're still going to square the first term. But first times last times 2 is different. You have a times negative b times 2, which would give you negative 2ab. And then square the last term. When you square a negative, it would become positive b squared. All, well, these things are called a perfect square trinomial. All of them have a positive last term. So the results from squaring a binomial is called a perfect square trinomial. And that's what we're going to be focusing on factoring once we learn how to multiply. Now this pattern takes a little bit more time to learn. It's a little trickier. But once you learn to multiply it, then it's going to help you learn to recognize that you have a perfect square trinomial that you can factor back. And while I'm talking about that, I'm going to go back to the flow chart. So we have done GCF. We've done four terms. We've done all the way down all the two terms. And now we're looking at three terms, and what we're focusing on just today is just the perfect square trinomial. And it will factor into the square of the binomial. Here's why that special pattern works. If you do x times x, you get x squared. I'm just using FOIL. And then x times 3, you get 3x. And then 3 times x is 3x. And then 3 times 3 is 9. So what happens to those middle terms? Basically, it's 3 times x times 2 because it doubles. So you get your 6x. So if I go use the special pattern over here, if I notice that, well, x plus 3 times x plus 3 is x plus 3 squared, by the way. So it's a square of a binomial. If I square the first term, I get x squared. First times last times 2, so x times 3 times 2 is a positive 6x, and then square the last term. So you can see that they are exactly the same. It's another special pattern that just saves you some time. So I'm just going to do a couple of these. So let's look at number 1. x plus 2 squared, it's a square of a binomial. Square the first, first times last times 2, and then square the last term. If it's a minus sign, like number 5, you would square the first term, so x squared is x squared. x times negative 3 times 2, first times last times 2 is negative 6x, and then square the last term would be a positive 9. So if you have 2x plus 1 squared, you would square the first term, which means you have to square the coefficient 2, and then first times last, so 2x times 1 times 2 would be 4x, and then square the last term. Now, I could write it out a little bit, like square the first term. First term times the last term times 2, and then square the last term. So that would give you 25x squared plus 30x plus 9. It's still a little shorter than doing the distributive property or the FOIL method. But what I would really like for you to be able to do is to look at it and be able to say to yourself what you need to do. So let's look at 14 and then we'll move on to the factoring. 
So square the first term, so 2x squared would be 4x squared. And then first times the last, so that's 2x times negative 3y times 2, because so, it's first times last times 2. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 times 2 would be negative 12, and then your x, y. And then square the last term, 3 would be 9, and then y squared. So if you notice all of the problems that I multiplied, they all are trinomials and they all start and stop with a perfect square. And also their last term is positive. So it's only going to be a perfect square trinomial if it starts and stops with a perfect square and that last term is positive. All right, let's look at factoring. Alright, so factoring a perfect square trinomial is quick and easy, but you have to recognize that you have one first. So here's the little formulas again. I'm going to multiply it out. So square the first, first times last times two, and square the last. So that's what we just did. Now, we're going to start with this and we're going to factor backwards. So this is how you test it. So what is the square root of A squared? That would be A. And the square root of B squared? That would be B. Is A times B times 2, the 2AB? Two yes. So it factors into A, and because it's a negative, it has a minus B squared. So let's look at a couple of these. I'm just going to go down through these three problems to make it a little bit of a quicker lesson. So I look at x squared plus 14x plus 49. This is a perfect square. This is a perfect square, so I'm going to check it. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 49 is 7. Now, if x times 7 times 2 is 14x, then I can factor it into a square of a binomial. And x times 7 times 2 is 14x, so I put a plus because that's a plus, and it factors into x plus 7 squared. x squared minus 18x plus 81. x squared is a perfect square. 81 is a perfect square. So if we can do the first times last times 2, then it will factor into a square of a binomial. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 81 is 9. x times 9 times 2 is 18x, but since it has a minus, it gets a minus. So it will factor into x minus 9 squared. If you look at number 5, 4x squared minus 20x plus 25, it does stop and start with a perfect square. The square root of 4x squared is 2x. The square root of 25 is 5. 2x times 5 is 10x times 2 is 20x. So it will factor into 2x minus 5 squared. If you want to pause the video and try to factor 2, 4, and 6, you could do that. I'm going to go ahead and write the answers. So if you want to pause it, do it, and then come back. Okay, so let's look at, let's look at this one. So it does stop and start with a perfect square, so let's check it. Let's see, the square root of 9x squared is 3x. The square root of 4 is 2. 3x times 2 is 6x times 2 is 12x. So that does factor into a square of a binomial. So let's look at this one. Let's see, the square root of this is 2x. The square root of this is 3. 2x times 3 times 2 is not 6x. So this one can't factor for more reasons than just the fact that it's not a perfect square trinomial, but we'll look at that in the next lesson. Don't be fooled just because x squared is a perfect square and 49 is a perfect square. Remember that if that last term isn't positive, then it's not going to factor. Like this one factors into x minus 1 squared, but it came from a positive 1 on that third term, positive 4. This is a negative 49, so this can't factor. It's not a perfect square trinomial because of the negative.
All right, let's look at this last factor, and we're going to talk about multiplying some binomials and trinomials. So this starts with a negative 3. It's a trinomial. Remember, the first step in factoring is taking out the GCF. So I'm going to factor out the GCF, and I have x squared plus 6x plus 9, because negative 3 times x squared is negative 3x squared, negative 3 times 6x is negative 18x, and negative 3 times positive 9 is negative 27. So the negative 3 is going to come down. I just need to check to see if I can factor the trinomial that's left. <coughs> it does look like a perfect square trinomial because it starts and stops with that perfect square. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 9 is 3. X times 3 times 2 is indeed 6x, so it factors into x plus 3 squared. So the multi-tier factoring, that's just part of what makes it algebra 2. All right, then we went over multiplying binomials and trinomials. We just did two of these because I told you earlier in the lesson it was important to learn the distributive property because FOIL doesn't work for everything. So we're going to go over multiplying a binomial times a trinomial. I'm going to take this x and multiply it by everything in the trinomial. And then I'm going to take the positive 3, because if that x wasn't there, you would say 3 times the trinomial. So positive 3 times the trinomial. And then I'm just going to do my distributive property and combine like terms. So x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 3x is negative 9x. x times 9 is positive 9x. 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times, oh, hold on. So x times 3x. I mislooked, so that's 3x squared. My bad done three of these videos in a row and I'm getting tired. So x times x squared is x cubed, x times negative 3x is negative 3x squared, and x times 9 is 9x. So that's okay. And then 3 times x squared is 3x squared, and 3 times negative 3 is negative 9x, and then 3 times positive 9 is 27. And then if you look, x cubed is the only one, so I'm going to bring it down. Negative 3x squared and positive 3x squared cancel or add out 9x minus 9x add out, and then you have your lonely little 27 to bring down. So actually this and this is the when we were factoring the sum of difference of cubes in the previous lesson. All right, so one more. You should pause it and try this. I'm going to go ahead and work it, but you should pause it and try it. So I'm going to start with 2x times that parentheses. And then the negative 1, because if that 2x wasn't there, you would say negative 1 times that parentheses. And then 2x times 3x squared is 6x cubed. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Maybe I won't mess this one up like I did the previous one. And then 2x plus 1 is 2x. And then negative 1 is just going to change all the signs. And then you're going to combine your like terms. So 6x cubed is the only cube. 4x squared minus 3x squared would be 1x squared. 2x minus 2x add out. And then you bring down your lonely little 1 here. And that would be your answer. So that concludes factoring part 3.